Hi, my name is Kemi Leuchlin. After my studies in tourism management, I have worked in that industry for over 10 years, mainly in revenue, sales and account management. During that time, I found that working analytically and finding creative solutions has always been the most fun part for me. I'm highly motivated when picking up new skills, especially in IT. So I was contemplating on studying a new field and switching to a new profession for quite a while. With the pandemic wreaking havoc on the tourism industry, it was the perfect timing for me to jump into this data science bootcamp. What I enjoyed the most during the bootcamp were projects on data analytics, APIs, SQL, and data banks. Hence, my final project is to pursue democratizing data, aka making data accessible to the public. All right, let's jump right into the presentation of my final project. Since my school years, I found it hard to access relevant data for personal research or to work on a project like, is there a correlation between air pollution and hurricanes? And if you find data, it's most often packaged in huge dissertations, not easily understandable or needs lots of time investment to extract the relevant info. For this project, I aim to provide the public with relevant data analytics on global demographics in correlation with climate and natural disasters, as I believe this might be of interest to a lot of people in different scenarios nowadays. My criteria is where credible data sources, regular updates of data, and the data is on a global level. Additionally, I wanted the data to be easily adaptable through filters, etc., and easily understandable through good visualization. That's why I chose to work with Google's BigQuery and visualize the data via Tableau. BigQuery's public database consists of 231 datasets ranging in topics from social and economics topics to climate, science and research. Among the contributors to the database are agencies like the US Department's National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and International Bureau of Census. And then there is the World Bank, which provides global demographic data, as well as OpenAQ, a nonprofit organization empowering communities around the globe to clean air by sharing air quality data. The data I have selected all come from the mentioned agencies and organizations. The data gets updated in different intervals, depending on the provider. Some hourly, daily, weekly, and some data is historical and hence doesn't get updated. This is primarily demographic data. During the process of working with the data, I realized I needed to learn about what all this data means first in order to be able to provide meaningful analysis, like how to interpret air quality or the severity of natural disasters. Which information out of these huge datasets are relevant and can be related to each other? The data is filled with abbreviations and different measure units like particles per cubic air meter. And then there is issues with aligning data from different sources that use different location categories like regions, some use cities and countries, and then there's latitude, longitude, or that span through entire different time ranges. So it was quite a tricky operation to make these data sets relate to each other. These challenges are also listed in my final conclusion of limitations and challenges working with this project. In the end, I was not able to make my product publicly accessible as BigQuery data being third party is not allowed for the Tableau public but Tableau Online is only accessible for registered users. However, if you follow my link and you register for the Tableau Online, you are able to access the data. So I could solve this problem by converting the data to offline and then upload it to Tableau Public. However, the files are huge and it would mean that the data won't be updated for the future, which was also one of the goals of this project. Now I'd like to show you my final results in Tableau Online. I have built 20 separate graphs about air quality, natural disasters, life expectancy, net migration rate, country sizes by population, and other demographic data as well, out of the nine selected data sets. Additionally, there are five dashboards which visualize the data in correlation to each other. Each graph can be selected separately and is adaptable to your interest. 
like filter by countries, timeframes and other criteria. I am now in the global map for air pollution. On the right side are the filters to view by specific pollutants, like carbon monoxide, specific timeframes, or specific countries. This dashboard shows air pollution, infant mortality rate, and life expectancy of the selected countries. Here the US in yellow and Norway in green have been selected and are represented in those colors throughout all the graphs. If you would like to look at other countries, you can select them by typing into the filter on the left side. Now you can see Canada is represented in purple and the pollutants are added on the air pollution map for Canada as well. I have now jumped into the dashboard on global disasters. On the upper left are the tsunamis, below that the earthquakes, on the upper right are the global air pollutants over time, underneath the hurricanes and typhoons. As mentioned, one of my challenges was working with data that has extremely different time ranges. Unfortunately, the available air pollution data only ranges back to 2007, while the global disasters range very long back into the past. Earthquakes, for instance, even before the common era. On the top is the filter to choose the time frame you would like to see by just typing that in or use the toggle. While this dashboard might suggest a correlation between increased air pollution and an increase of natural disasters over time, in the next dashboard you will see that when looking at the world map, this might not be so obvious. Here are again the four different data sets we were just looking at, but on a global map view. So even though the worst air pollution this data set provides is registered in North America and Europe, most of the hurricanes and typhoons, for instance, form in the equatorial region. Please also note that my analytics are limited to the provided data sets of the mentioned organizations. Hence, I don't claim that they are 100% complete. It might be that those organizations don't have full access to all countries' data, for instance. This is it from my side. Thank you for your interest in my project. You can access it via the provided link to my Tableau online site of the project. And if there are any questions, please feel free to reach out.